Hello there, Virgo, and welcome to your forecast. This is for the month of September. I'm really happy to see everybody again, and I would like to, uh, first of all, welcome back everybody that is a returning viewer. Always good to see you, and again, it's an honor to be able to help you with your own journey and to give you what you need for the month ahead. If you're brand new, I'd also like to introduce myself. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. The way that I organize each and every month's reading is as follows. I like to start off with some channeled information, and this channeled information is just me connecting with spirit and providing whatever comes through clairvoyantly. The second part is uh, the Celtic Cross, and the Celtic Cross is a chance for me to go a lot deeper and look at all of the different types of information from the highs to the lows to the in-between challenges that you might have. And after that, I expand the forecast to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. This can always be used for your sun, your rising, and for your moon sign. And if you want to check on behalf of someone in your life that you care about or you love, you can also use the forecast for that. If, however, you don't happen to know all of those three things, then just stick with your birth sign and that's going to give you all the guidance that you need. If after watching this you enjoy what you see and you would like to get involved, please stay around until the end. At that point, right after I give you a nice review of everything, uh, I'll detail how you can do just that. First of all, you can like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join me on social media, book an appointment if you would like additional guidance, or you can become a patron and contribute an amount either one time or recurring. I'll get into more information at the end. I also put some information right here, but right here and right now, I know you want to get into the forecast. So let's go straight into the channeled information for the month of September. So Virgo, as I was selecting a deck of cards and meditating on your sign, I got this rush of really positive energy coming through. And what came through mentally for me was like the, the sun rising. I just felt warmth. I saw new opportunities. And for me, it felt like the equivalent of an energetic reset. As I engaged in automatic writing, this is what I recorded. The first thing is that what I want to talk about first, which is I think that you're entering a brand new cycle. And this means that if there was anything that was going on in the past where you felt stuck, or it was like you were going up a hill but not making any progress, this is the month where you get to push through. It's a breakthrough opportunity for you. In order to do that though, there are two requirements here. The first one is to choose healthier and happier options for yourself. I believe that free will is always there for us. This is the reason we show up every month. It's to empower you uh, to make the best choices in your life. Now with this, I felt like when I was going into your reading that some of you may have a choice to kind of like fall back on old habits or that you may, if you're in the middle of a change, be thinking like, should I have made that change? It was so much more predictable and comfortable in that old way of being. Now I'm in something brand new and as I say this, I kind of feel this, um, this energy right in my uh, third chakra, right around the solar plexus. So this is a cord that you have uh, sometimes to a person, but it can also be to a place or to a sort of a way of being. So this is a month where you're kind of, it's like a rebirth for yourself. And I think that if you treat yourself as if you were kind of like a newborn, you need time to get your bearings. You need support from friends and family as you make a shift in your life. And you need to avoid anything that feels toxic or kind of deflates your ego during this month. It's important to protect whatever vision you have that you're trying to bring into fruition. So know that you have my support. I want you to develop your own support internally. And then as you do that, you're also going to draw in people that see that new version of you and can start to respect and respond to it. In order to do that, you're also going to have to release temptations or old habits that might be pulling you uh, towards the past. And I mentioned earlier that sometimes when we're trying to start anew or to move or to create something that is outside of our comfort zone, it's hard, right? Because we think of nostalgically often of how the past used to be, but we forget about all of those little triggers and all of those moments that brought us to right here and right now. So I just want to reinforce for many of you that First of all, congratulations on being able to be into this new space where you can create. So in this month of creation, choose to support yourself, choose to attach to thoughts that are reinforcing the possibilities, not bringing forth all of the sort of negative or um, sort of self-defeating things that might have in the past kept you in place. This is a month to propel, to choose healthier and happier options, to say no to temptations, and in doing so, you are going to get so much further along that path. The other thing that I would like to talk about, especially going back to that image of the sun, is that organization is gonna be really important this month. I don't think you normally have a problem with this actually, but I think that 
a little bit more focus on that is key. And what I see is that you have all the required elements for success and for happiness around you. But this is a month where they're kind of being shuffled around. Think of the sun when the solar system first began. All the clouds, all the dust, all those rocks floating around, it had to kind of bring order to it. And things naturally kind of coalesced in the areas that they needed to. Then the sun sort of decided <laughs> through gravity and whatnot, kind of what needed to be in what place in orbit. So I want you to kind of prioritize all of the things in your life and see them almost in orbits around you. So what are you gonna keep in your inner orbit? These are gonna be the healthiest things, this, the most supportive things, and whatever it is that you're trying to really develop this month. What's gonna be right around you? This is probably who's supporting you and who you're supporting. And then push the other stuff into the exterior orbits all the way out there so that you're not being distracted by it. And that's what I think is really important is who's orbiting around you and how are they affecting you? Are they pulling at your energy? Um, are they enhancing things? And uh, you really wanna be careful about who's around you and how that affects your organization, your commitment, and also your self-confidence because I think all of these things are key to a rebirth or a redefinition of who you wanna become. So this is a very supportive month in respect to something new and a new cycle, but a little bit of cleaning has to happen in, again, I'm seeing it as orbits. So it's your friend group, your activities, and then the environment around you. Make sure all of these things are orderly and supportive. And if you do that, that second piece that I didn't even capture in the automatic writing, I think that's gonna also be really important to you, okay? Let's go ahead now and move along to the Celtic cross. At this point, I'm gonna pull the camera down so you can see as I spread out all the cards on the table, but right after that, I'll pull up each and every card and we'll discuss and relate it to all of the messages for the month of September. In the catalyst position, you have the sea serpent. And just a quick reminder on what this card is and how it functions. The catalyst to me is probably one of the more important cards because it helps me draw connections between everything that I just pulled. And it also helps you figure out how you can access the best possible energy of the month. If you think of a catalyst, it can make things kind of go faster. It can also push things off. For you this month, let's see how it's gonna to relate to you. So when I see uh, anything with water, when I'm looking at oracle cards or if I'm looking at like the suit of cups, it can show a significant emotional reaction within you. So when I see this, I feel like many of you have two things that you're kind of dealing with. One is emotionally how you feel. It's going to absolutely have an effect on the world around you. So your enthusiasm is in a very positive way, something that's going to be magnetic and infectious. Your negativity or your doubt can also kind of cause those ripple effects too. So for me, the sea serpent really has to do with your own ability to rein in and control your emotions this month in respect to the people that you are touching in your life, the uh, activities and opportunities in front of you. So try to stay 
at the very least try to stay neutral and when you can use the passion use the excitement to propel rather than to detract from everything uh, that's coming through because remember this is a new cycle and you want to set into motion that positive energy now that being said if there's something that you need to release because as i look in your recent past we have the death card reversed if you have to release something an attachment to something um, maybe you actually did decide to kind of like quit a job or let go of some sort of a habit in your life or maybe you you lost something or someone that's important to you you have to heal you have to sort of take care of you first and foremost because when you do that then you're going to be able to get back to that place of really being able to kind of assess everything that's going on around you. Otherwise, you have this lens uh, or this filter that is warping and uh, not allowing you to really be the best that you can be. So the sea serpent is all about you being able to control, rein in, and then once you have that within your control, you can actually manifest with this energy and with this card. To me, a serpent, uh, a snake, is one of the most powerful symbols that you can pick up in any of these oracle decks. Um, it's a symbol of vitality. It's a, also a very sort of agile and flexible energy. And with both water, which I see as fluid, and a snake, which can move through things in a way that we as human beings can't and other creatures can't, this month is going to really challenge and require you to be a lot more flexible than you may have had to be in the past. As I looked at that card, I got a clairvoyant image in my mind, which was of a tree sort of being able to bend, whether it's a willow tree or if you want to think of a really young sapling. The sapling has an ability to kind of sway and it doesn't really break or snap as easily because unlike this large established tree, yeah, the trunk is okay, but a lot of times a really tough wind can break a branch, but with a a very sort of pliable and flexible sapling that's not going to happen so one of the advantages of starting this brand new cycle this month is you can be flexible you can be agile you can change and i want you to really lean on that flexibility this month and everything that comes through try not to make it feel like it's either way too important or it's the end of the world it's just one thing that you're going to navigate through that's going to be very important as we look at everything else today Let's go ahead to the center card. And the second big thing that I want you to focus on is your ability to concentrate or just to be able to look at something and focus on the outcome. We have the seven of cups at the center. And to me, this is a card of exploring all the options. It's actually a very good card and a very good message showing that for many of you, this may be the first time in a long time that you've allowed yourself to dream, uh, to think of new ways of doing something. Uh, and that's a good thing. If you're feeling like you're stagnating in your life, this is also coming through because the universe is giving you a very gentle nudge that if you don't change something on your own, uh, there's going to be a big change happening anyway, because your outcome is the tower. So I want you to listen to the whispers of intuition that are coming through, the guidance that you're downloading and, and sort of thinking and feeling, and understand that it's coming through right now as a gift so that you can avoid or you can alter the tower. For me, the tower doesn't have to be negative. We all go through moments in our lives that would uh, constitute a tower. And I'll give you some examples right now. That could be like graduation, which is great. It's, it's, it's an exciting thing, but of course it's redefining who you are and what you're gonna do with your life, quite literally. Marriage can be a tower. Divorce can be a tower. Um, you know, there's both ends of the spectrum for all of these things. But whenever you decide to embark on something new or leave something that you used to do behind, uh, then everything around you shifts. And what you want to do right now is to try to get ahead of the curve. I've talked about this before as sort of like surfing, since I'm Southern California based. Uh, I'm not a surfer myself, but I've watched them and it's kind of cool to see how when everything goes well, they can really ride the energetic wave, okay? So for you, I think one thing that you want to think of this month is that Yes, I am, you know, I'm in this, the midst of something new, but I can see where I'm going and I'm going to trust it. I'm going to feel it out and I can ride the wave of change. And that's really what I think is your big possibility. This is even in, in some ways more important than what I saw here with the sea serpent. This is about the emotions. This is about the energy. The energy this month is all surrounding change. And I think for many of you, because I'm looking at recent past here with death reversed, Death reverse can show the inability to have that change happen or sometimes a reluctance around the change that wants to happen. So if you can make peace with the fact that 
you know, there's something in your life that's pulling you in a new direction. However subtle or however big it is, it's important to honor it and to try to make some steps in that direction. Now, crossing the Seven of Cups, we have a wonderful card, the Lovers. There's rarely anything negative that comes through with this. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that this could simply be about you considering what in your life brings you joy, brings you passion. I think that's great. And in this case, it's good to sort of sit with the Seven of Cups for a while until you figure that out. This can also quite literally mean that you're trying to figure out how relationships are going to factor into this month. To understand this, I want to pull in some of the other cards and then go back to something that I talked about earlier. So if we look at your ego, we have the Ten of Cups in reverse. Ten of Cups is good, but the reversal shows that many of you are either giving too much or you're not getting what you want from your friends, from your family, from the people around you. For the Four of Wands that I see in the environment, the reversal, again, this is a very good card, but it shows that foundationally you might be needing, wanting, or seeking some more support in your life. And as I'm looking at recent past, you may have lost a support system in your life too. Maybe this was a parent, maybe it was a friend, maybe it was a mentor. So when I'm looking at everything, it seems just a little bit off balance. Um, by the way, death in the tower could have shown that somebody just moved. It doesn't mean that they have to die. So maybe someone, you know, moved to another part of the country or another part of the world. And what you're feeling is a little bit of um, a hole in your life. So that doesn't mean that they're gone permanently. It might mean that you still have a chance to connect with them. So if that's the case, if it's more of a symbolic separation, then what you want to do this life is think, what can I do in my life to create something new that will help not necessarily replace that, but not make me codependent on that person because they're trying to go after their happiness and their truth and I'm trying to do the same. So this is a chance to heal and as I said earlier, rebirth, recreate something new. That brings me back to what I wanted to talk about, which was the orbits. So if someone orbited out, what you're actually do doing right now or what the universe is allowing for you is to now create space so that you could grow. Um, there's more space around you so as a Luminous being, you could actually shine a little bit more, you have more energy, and someone's not kind of sapping that. Um, or you could call someone new into orbit. This could be a friend, it could be a lover, it could be someone who shares the same passions as you. That, my friend, is up to you, and that's what the Seven of Cups and the Lovers is really indicating. One other thing that came through as I look at all of these cards together, Seven of Cups, Lovers, and the fact that it's touching two cards, Death and the Emperor, the Emperor reversed, is that someone is having a hard time reading your cues. Now the fact that you're even tuning into this reading today tells me that you're awake, you're aware, you're perceptive. And you may, even if you don't recognize your own intuition, you have skills, you're able to kind of read people. There's someone in your life that's close to you that needs clarity. And as I look at Deep Past, we have the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords indicates not only do you have that ability to be very honest and very straightforward, but it's coming through as a lesson that you need to remember this month, which is sometimes it's better just to put it out there so that people understand what you expect. Um, clarity in expectations, uh, also clarity in what's frustrating you or what your needs and desires are. It's really good when it comes to your friendships, to your coworkers especially with marriages. So if there's someone close in your life and you're just thinking, why don't they get me? Why can't they understand what I want? When in doubt, actually say what you want and know that not everyone is kind of advancing on the same path of, of empathy and intuition. So that clarity is gonna be your best friend this month. And I think the most important thing for you is that we want to uh, release any sort of molds that people might be cast in, any sort of predefined roles, or if you, if you think of someone in your life I'd actually like you to think of someone that drives you a little bit crazy. You think, why can't, they, <laughs> why can't they change or why does this always have to be this way? Maybe this month you recast them. It's almost like a movie. And instead of them playing one role, they're going to play another. That's going to be really important. The same is true for you, by the way. If you think to yourself, this will never happen because it never happens to me. If it's something good that you feel like you're not deserving of or that is just out of reach, the fact that you've cast yourself in that role is self-fulfilling. The same is true of people in your life and the orbits around you. Put them in a different orbit, put them in a, diff a different light, see them as someone better than they may even see themselves. This is really especially true for children. And when I was growing up, I, I had the fortunate experience of moving across country. When I was in one school, there was a group of teachers that didn't like me or didn't understand me, and they thought I was, I, I was a lost cause. When I moved across country, 
the other teachers saw me as someone that was capable of learning. They were happy and they welcomed me and I flourished. In one, I just felt like nobody cares anyway, so why should I work? In the other one, I thought, well, I, I guess I'm good. They're telling me I'm good. So then I was suddenly excelling. The way that you treat children, animals, people, lovers, everyone around you is exactly the same. If you believe they're bad, then they're going to kind of try to fulfill that. So try to see the good in them or try to see the opportunities. And then if they still persist in that space of not wanting to see it themselves, then you realize this probably isn't an investment of time or energy that you need to put into it. But there is a chance for many of you, because I'm looking at a, a serpent here. And when I see serpents, I see the ability to change skins. There is shifting that can happen. So some of the shifting happens here and here, and then the rest, it's up to them. But if you can change the way you see them and the way you feel about them, they may be able to change themselves. And as a healer, as a light worker, as an intuitive, this is a beautiful gift that you can bring to the planet. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit more about Ace of Swords. The other thing here that I'd like you to work on is communication. Uh, we see here that you've worked on that or that's been something that you've wanted to develop. It's coming back again this month. So maybe you want to explore your, you know, with writing or public speaking or again, just being more outspoken in your conversations with everyone. Because so many of the family and support cards are actually um, reversed, I want to try to help you bring balance. And I think a lot of that is communication. Now, as I look at death in the recent past, my guides reminded me that the tower at the other end is the equivalent basically of an open door. So one door shuts, the other one opens. You could also think of this as a portal or a wormhole between two spaces. The interesting thing is that you have the ability to conduct because we have the seven of cups here at the center and then right on top is the king of wands. And the king of wands in this case is like basically like a magician or a conductor. What he imagines is what comes into fruition. So this month, if you can let go of something, knowing that you are already creating something newer, better, and more fulfilling, remember I said choosing healthier and happier options. If you can start to see that in the future, then this becomes an exciting journey and much like something with a lot of gravity, like I was saying, if it's a wormhole or something like that, you could just kind of go through this on your own velocity, on the velocity of hope, of trust, of being excited about the change rather than uh, not allowing that change to happen. Okay. Um, the King of Wands is also a great card for organization. And I mentioned it was important to stay organized this month. A King of Wands card for me is fantastic at management. In fact, it's the ultimate management card. You may find opportunities in your life for, this could be a new job opportunity, it could also be in your life a chance to sort of freelance or organize other people. I just see a lot of ability to bring a big picture together and then get people behind you. So I'm excited for those of you that are deciding to kind of either take on your own business, try to step up in a current position, uh, or if you wanted to even see what else is out there. This puts you in a very good light because it's in the crowning position. Other people can see that as well, as long as you feel it and see it for yourself. As I look at near future, I'm giving you permission to step back. The Emperor in Reverse is a card that is basically saying that, yes, you have all of this rich knowledge and experience. Yes, you probably know how to save someone from making a mistake. But if they're not looking for your help, if you step in this month, what could happen is they could actually look back on the situation and think that you were trying to prevent them from being happy. Uh, they could also get frustrated that they weren't allowed to figure this out for themselves, like for some reason you didn't trust them. And the interesting thing is that it actually fosters this feeling of aggravation or even blame that you didn't let me try this or you didn't believe in me. And so if you feel like someone is going down the wrong path this month, what would be better is just to sort of be very supportive and you could talk to them about it too and just sort of see how they're feeling, if everything's okay. Be present, be supportive, be available, but unless asked this month, then just kind of step back and let them try things. We all need to kind of have that freedom to decide what we want and even freedom to kind of fumble sometimes. Good leaders, whether you're a boss, a parent, or a friend even, um, will not necessarily try to tell someone every step of the way what to do, but will be there to help them. And if then they need your help, you could assist them in trying to make a better decision. But it's okay to let everyone sort of stumble occasionally this month because, again, remember, you got to focus on yourself. And if you're kind of stretching yourself too thin, 
you won't grow and this other person won't grow. Sometimes, again, as a mother, a father, or a boss, this is hard because you see, you know from life experience what, what someone has to do. But the person that is kind of learning from you or in your protection, in your orbit, they have to grow too. And they're never going to be able to shine as brightly as you if you don't give them the chance to kind of experience all the same things you did, okay? The other thing with Emperor Reversed is I really want you to try to move as much as possible. Uh, I talk about this a lot, but stagnancy, we see the death card reverse and the emperor reverse. This can be stagnation of thought, but it can also be just your body sitting too much. When you exercise that movement, blood and sweat and everything else, it, uh, endorphins especially, it's going to shift you energetically and allow you to be more flexible. And as these new opportunities are coming through this month, the emotions will not pull you down into that same space of doubt, of fear, of frustration. The other message that's coming through as I look at the Emperor Reverse, especially as I'm looking at ego and environment, is that you need to take time off. You and also anyone that's in your charge, anyone that you're watching. So if you're a boss, make sure that your team is getting enough time to go home and spend time with friends and family. Because literally, in the ego, some of them need to regroup with their family and then same thing with the environment. Same thing is true for you. So this month, it's not all about work. And it, for those of you that may not be working because I'm not seeing any pentacles cards coming through, then it's okay to spend time with friends and family. That's where the universe kind of wants you to be right now. And also spread the word with that collection of people because you may find your next opportunity through that. So being social this month is really an important thing. It's a trend that I've seen across several signs and I'm highlighting that because just as I was talking about surfing that energetic wave, this is one of the things that's coming through. Wherever you're at right now, I think that part of that journey is to expand your social sphere a little bit or revisit that and connect with people that maybe you have missed or you want to um, deepen your sort of relationship with, especially with the lovers here at the center. Uh, if you're looking for love, love can come through this month, by the way. We'll talk more about that in the expanded forecast, but I got an indication here with the King of Wands. It could be a fire sign energy. Um, the Emperor card shows that there could be an age difference or an experience difference or even maturity difference, but that usually isn't the end of the world, especially since what I'm seeing here at the center is both of you are looking for something new. So just be open to someone that may be not in your usual um, expectations. It's not, you're not your usual type. Uh, and it may start off as a friendship, but it definitely has the potential to grow. For those of you in an existing relationship, I think the important thing is, again, staying open-minded to your spouse because there were cards here with a lot of sort of, again, it's sort of like there's a, a block between the two of you, but there's all this energy that wants to come out. So communication, taking a picnic, going to see a movie, um, having a date night where you're just chilling at home and watching a movie. That's really important to keeping the relationship healthy and alive. By the way, if you're just single and happy, then you have an ability to connect with a lot of people this month. You could bring in new business partnerships because the lovers can be that as well, or a new friendship. Um, as I'm looking at your ego, it's good that we just talked about all of these potential connections with people because um, the Ten of Cups in reverse is really a reminder for you to have some healthy limits in your life and also the freedom and encouragement to say no to something. Ten of Cups Upright, it's a card where you're doing things for the world, um, you're doing things with friends, it's bringing you a sense of enjoyment, fulfillment, and even purpose. But all of these things can be brought to an extreme because Nine of Cups or Ten of Cups in reverse is basically going too far. So if you're volunteering too much, if you're partying too much, if you're, um, if you're just trying to be with your family too much, Anything like that, you know, it can actually get to the point where it's exhausting, annoying, or frustrating. So this month, say no a little bit, spend a couple nights in with just you or just you and your partner, and get back and recharge a little bit. I think that's gonna be essential and also more authentic. So if, you've just, if you just need a little space, it's okay. Because if you don't, something's gonna give. For me, the tower can show uh, you know, a health situation coming through, or even sloppiness that leads to a mistake or an accident or something like that. And I don't want that for you. And I know you don't want that for yourself either. As we look at the environment, there's a reminder here that uh, you matter too. The Four of Wands is a friendship card. It's a card of being faithful, of being supportive to people. I like that it's present in the environment. I don't love that it's reversed though, because a lot of times what that is showing is a need for more reciprocity. And I'm seeing a lot of you doing a lot for others. And this is a month for you to also be on the receiving end. 
Again, you could just say no to certain events and allow for yourself to recharge. You could also try to practice some restraint when it comes to making plans or organizing. Let someone else organize. Let them call you up. Doing this is going to really balance out the, the sort of power dynamics and it gives them a chance to think and try new things or give them a chance to treat you. So whatever it is this month, you don't have to be in the driver's seat all the time in relationships. This will make for less codependency and healthier relationships overall. In your hopes, fears, and possibilities, we have a great card here. This is the Nine of Wands. It indicates near completion, that basically you're getting very close to being able to break through in a certain area. And you know we've been talking about where to hold back everywhere else this month particularly in relationships, also in sort of your family situations. The one area I wanna see you push is in work uh, or in projects or in personal development. Whatever you're trying to create for yourself, for your longevity, for your career path, or whatever it is that you're trying to make a difference uh, in the world with, this is the month to really focus in that space. Nine of Wands is showing how far you've come and how little you have yet to go and it's an encouragement. It's basically saying, there's the finish line, don't give up yet. So if there's something that you've been trying to make happen, the tower's right around the corner, the big change, the big opportunity's there, and it can be big. I'm not afraid of the tower, you shouldn't be either. To me, the tower can be making a splash in a really big way, in an exciting way. So if you've been trying to redefine who you are, to change something about your life, to make a difference, those are all the positive energies of the tower. I will kind of highlight a couple things here with the connection between the Nine of Wands and the Tower. If you are exhausted in your life, if you haven't been taking care of your health, you have to this month. So some of you might be in a place where there's either a family history of some issues or you've just been running yourself ragged. This month, make sure that you relax a little bit, take some time with friends and family and reconnect and just get back into a place where you're grounded. If also you've been burning the candle at both ends, because the Nine of Wands can be a, like a boss that's working you too hard. This is a month where you have to speak up and say, I need, I need time to recharge. But the tower doesn't have to be bad. As I said earlier, it can show a move, it can show graduation, it can show something finally finishing and then making the desired impact in your life. Because I saw death reversed and tower being sort of foils to one another and also being the ability to kind of travel through a portal, travel through a one closed door and open up an opportunity. So be imaginative, be inventive and rely on your own strength and your connections because boy oh boy do you have a lot of connections here with the lovers, with the ten of cups and with the four of wands. Friends, family and loved ones are there to support you. This may be something where you need all of those different groups to help you out. But ultimately, because of the positive cards that are surrounding the tower, I'm not worried about it. The tower is all about context. And when I see it right now, I think there's a lot of positive change that could happen for you. Let's move along now to health, wealth, love, and destiny. This is the expanded forecast. Uh, the first card that I like to look at is health. This is an all-inclusive card. It's not gonna just be your physical health. It's also gonna be what's going on emotionally, what's going on around you because these things also factor into how you're feeling. The interesting thing is moments before this I was thinking there's more to come with the friendships. You know we saw the four of wands here and now I have a card here showing envy and this could be either something that you're feeling internally or something that uh, someone around you close is feeling. So if you're noticing that for instance in your friend group that someone's acting a little bit odd Either they're shorter with you or they don't seem to be connecting in the same way. If things are going very well for you, it could be that they're having a hard time and it's not because they're not necessarily happy for you, although that's some of what the card is showing, but it is reversed. So the tempered version of this would be that they are frustrated with the lack of progress in their own life. This is also indicative of your ego because it's coming through for you. So if you're looking at people in your life and you're wondering like, Oh, I'm, I'm working so hard on myself. I'm trying to do everything that I can. But when I compare myself to this person, I feel like I'm showing up kind of short. Something's wrong, I'm not quite there. Uh, then realize that the comparison actually isn't the healthiest thing. All that matters at the end of your day and also the end of your time on this planet is how you feel about your work. Your, your own journey is gonna be very different than your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, or someone else in your life, a friend, a, a 
also appear. You know, these people are trying to experience different life lessons. So they may have more money, less money, uh, more friends, less friends, more luck, less luck. It was actually sort of part of their cosmic plan so that they could grow. So where you're at right now is part of that tapestry, that energetic tapestry that you laid out for yourself so that you could grow to your maximum. So stop focusing on others, focus more on yourself, and know that when you start to celebrate how far you've come, what you're getting out of everything right now, go from, if you are feeling envy, go from envy to gratitude. You will shift everything around you and you'll start to accomplish some of those things. And you'll shift out of these life experiences that you don't really want to stay in. And that's okay. If you're feeling like you're stagnating, then think, why, did, why is this happening? And what can I do now to really develop myself? And that's the best way. If you could look at the people around you as inspiration and be happy for them, for the fact that they're working on themselves, that's what we all want to do. We're all classmates on this planet. Then this will dissipate. And if someone else around you is having a hard time, what I just went through, you understand why. It's because they're just frustrated with themselves. Envy isn't, it doesn't make someone a bad person. It's really sort of a reaction to stress or stimuli around someone. And so it's sort of like more frustration, someone being hard on themselves, looking at someone else and then getting angry, but not necessarily taking that anger and thinking, well, let me work with this. Why am I feeling triggered? Um, so for you this month, if you're the person that's feeling that sense of lower frequency energy needs to happen, it needs to happen faster. Why isn't it happening? That's not helping. <laughs> Take a deep breath and think instead, I'm going to work on this over the course of this month. Another way you can take this card and turn it around is to sort of remember back to childhood. When you were a kid, think of the people that inspired you. Maybe it was an astronaut, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was a doctor, maybe it was some celebrity on television, it doesn't matter. Whatever it was that inspired you as a kid, you had the ability to look at someone that was more than you and instead of feeling a sense of, I'm angry because I don't have that, you thought, they're awesome. I wanna be like that. That's how you can take envy and bring it into something good. Have it be inspirational and think, this person is really great at that. I want to work on that myself. I'm inspired by them. I'm so grateful that I found them in my life. And guess what? You could actually go talk to that person, especially if they're a friend. You could say, I need some help. You, th you seem to have your life together in this. How do you do that? You know what you're going to find out? Some of you, you might find that they're not as perfect as you think. They're probably struggling through things as well, and they might have some great advice. So when you humanize someone, when you humanize a situation, then it becomes easier, okay? Um, just to bring it back to just general health things, movement is important. Some of you are sitting too much this month. I see a lot of change going on around you, so it's important to have something stable. So try to keep a schedule this month. That's where the organization came through. It's okay if you're going through loss to experience whatever you're experiencing. If it's sadness, if it's anger, if it's frustration or fear, talk to somebody about that. You have a lot of friends and family that want to come through, okay? Let's move along now to your wealth card. For me, wealth is resources. That can include your time, your energy, or your money. And more importantly, it's your self-worth and how you're either attracting or pushing away these opportunities. Your card this month says release and relax. The card is reversed, which is showing for many of you either a reluctance to do this or perhaps that you're at one end or the other. I mentioned that balance was important uh, for all of you this month. So if you're relaxing too much, then you can start to ease into more work. If you're working yourself to the point of exhaustion or maybe getting sick, obviously this rest and relaxation is going to be essential to productivity, to happiness, to fulfillment. And so I think it's really important this month to just, I think for most of you, take a break. And the breather for many of you could be uh, from all of the energy and the time that you're investing in others. Focus on you, focus on, again, if there was anything in your life where you feel like it's not working the way I want it to work, then take this and be inspired, rest, and think a little bit about what it was that you loved about others and how you can cultivate that within yourself. This will allow for the improvement to happen, um, not only in the relationships and how you feel about them, but also then in your own productivity. And it's gonna help you get from the nine of wands to the 10 of wands to completion. So your key to more productivity is actually to take a break, to pull back a little bit, to do less for those around you and to do more for your own development, your own happiness. Uh, it's not saying that you're not gonna work hard. It's saying that you're gonna work smarter. And when you do work hard, take time to relax and to recuperate. 
You're no good to anybody, especially yourself, if you burn yourself out, okay? That's basically what I'm seeing here. Also, because this is really close to the environment card, if you're in a position of power, of management, of somehow influencing others, make sure that they're taking that time for self-care as well. So yes, set a, set a good example and inspire others to do the same. All right, as we look at love, it's, it's actually a really fun card here. We have a, it was reversed, but I'm gonna turn it upright so we can read it. It says, flirt, extend your uh, lighthearted energy to others. So here's the interesting thing with a card like this. First of all, we got the lovers coming through at the center. So if you're looking for love, that's a great thing. It's here for you. If you're in an existing relationship, be careful, obviously. There could be someone in your midst that is interested in more than just friendship. Now, the other piece of this is just to have fun with friends. When I think of this, it's a playful card. It's very close to like the fool. Um, so I think that this is a great time to have those social activities, uh, especially for those of you that might be in a really stressful situation uh, at work or something like that. You need to blow off steam a little bit. And if you're also just stressed out in general, this can be something that is fun, that does bring you joy. So maybe it is, you know, anything like, Maybe it's a reading club, it could be bowling, it could be a sport, it could be you know hanging out with some friends once a week and doing lunch. I don't care what it is, but make some time for that and allow for that interplay between one another to exist. It's also just saying don't take yourself too seriously. If you can have a laugh, if someone else can have a laugh, that playful energy is going to help relationships across the board. But of course, be careful, again, because it does say flirt. If someone is giving you cues and you don't want that, speak up. We have the Ace of Swords here in the deep past, so it's important to speak your truth and have some boundaries. I really like your outcome. We have here uh, Believe and Trust, and this is a, a prayer before going to sleep. We don't need to kind of read the entire thing, but I think what's important here is that this self-belief and self-trust is something that you want to reset both in the evening and in the morning. It can be your prayer before you go to bed, and it can be your mantra uh, as you step out to work or before you do whatever you're going to do that day. Uh, the card was reversed, so when I see trust reversed or I see belief reversed, it does also factor into self-confidence and self-worth. So I think this is the one area where you can invest in yourself this month and start to see your own worth. And in your meditation, start to project that out and project thoughts like, I am ready, I am worth whatever this opportunity is, and I'm ready to receive the abundance. That could be your three-part mantra this month. So, wow, some really exciting stuff coming through for you. And uh, I feel like this is a perfect place now that we can do a quick review and then we'll move along to the closing word. This month is all about new cycles. Remember to choose healthy and happy options in front of you and release temptations. This could be a temptation in wanting to do the same old thing. It could be also someone around you that's trying to pull you back and not allow you to move forward. One of the most important things you can do to set yourself up for success this month is to really rein in emotions. I think it's important because some of you are going through a major shift in your life. And when we have something like death, whether it's reversed or upright, it shows that you're trying to make peace with what it is that you're letting go of. Once you can get your emotions into a place that you've processed them, you understand them, then you can start to embrace the other energy of this, which is fluidity and also flexibility. And I mentioned earlier about two other things here. One is riding that energetic wave. Once your emotions are okay, and once you can kind of get to the higher frequencies, then you can see the connection between death and the tower, which is really a portal, taking you from a place that wasn't working into a place that's highly transitional and that you can mold. If you think of this kind of as a potter, being able to shape, shift, and mold it into what you want, the tower can be exciting. It's taking something that was once in one form and creating something new. You are an alchemist, you are an architect, you're a creator, a conductor. That's what I see between these two, but it's important to remember that. I also mentioned things orbiting in and out this month. For some of you, this could be a new relationship. For some of you, you could be deciding to make room for something that you love this month. Again, a lot of that choice sits with you, and that's what we saw at the center here. It's a month to dream, to create, and to really shape your new reality. You don't want to get lost too long in the Seven of Cups energy, but you don't want to rush it either. Feel it out and know when the time is right. Uh, relationships are so important this month. We have the Lovers, the Ten of Cups, the Four of Wands, and then we have some very interesting energy almost all the way through here that is about bringing some sort of balance in those relationships. So I think that once you 
get control of your own emotions and start to figure out who do I want to orbit in or orbit out of my life. It's going to be um, an exciting month where a lot of shifting can happen for you. As we look at deep past, learning to use your words, use your communication, it's going to really be important this month because you've already developed the required skills and I think it's coming back this month because one, someone in your own life may not understand what's going on and also even you may need to practice active listening. The King of Wands was upright, but I think whenever I get one of these heavy management cards or a card like this which shows closure and sometimes a conservative view, it's important to practice uh, good active listening skills this month. It's going to really help you out and benefit you. Death reversed. It feels like if you haven't already made some required changes in your life, they're going to happen pretty quickly. Uh, and a lot of you are already dealing with some of the energy of change, basically. And that's what death is. It's transformation. Uh, once you sort of think through that and let go a little bit, what I'm seeing here is new people coming into your life with the Ten of Cups and the Four of Wands. It could be new love, it could be new friendships. The important thing for you is a feeling that this is something that is reciprocal. You're getting what you're putting into it. It's gonna be tricky this month because power dynamics are at play. We have the Emperor Reverse and a lot of relationship cards. One of the most challenging elements this month, or the challenging aspects I should say, is to let go. Let go a little bit of control and release the reins when it comes to telling people what to do or maybe even organizing things. Let some of these people that I'm seeing here in the ego and the environment come to you. Have stronger limits. Say no if you don't wanna do something. Allow for your energy to be a little bit more uh, invested in yourself and not spread so far because I'm seeing that that could be what's bringing some of you into this place of exhaustion. The Nine of Wands is a card showing that you've really fought for everything that you've earned so far. Don't give up because what really sits at the end of this month is big change, change that you can control. And I talked earlier about this being sort of your chance to shift to shape to mold things in a way that you haven't before and if you see this tower card as that as sort of an alchemic card then uh, really it's an exciting opportunity for you when i look back at the health card there's a reminder here that you can recast yourself and others in a new role if you're looking at someone and you're feeling thoughts of envy or jealousy um, i want you to instead change that around and use it as inspiration if there's someone in your life also where you think that you know they're not kind of showing up the way that they need to remember that you can always shift that around a little bit this is a chance for you to really let go of an old skin an old layer of something that existed here and all envy is is a lower form of love jealousy and envy is really it's something that comes through when you look at someone or a situation and you think that's something that resonates with me why isn't it in my life Use it as a learning opportunity, use it as inspiration. Think of the teen idols that you had as a kid and go back to that sort of mentality. Um, I love this person and I aspire to be like them. I don't envy them. A reminder as we look in health that it's important for you to have a balance of work and relaxation, knowing that that relaxation actually creates a release in your life, allowing you to be more present, more appreciative of everything that's going on. Set a good example if you're a boss or a parent Make sure that you take time off so that people around you do the same. There is sort of this flirtatious energy coming through for love and relationships. It can be harmless if it's just with friends, but if there is a uh, love relationship and you're feeling that same energy, realize that boundaries and borders are important. A more sort of uh, higher level view of this is just simply allowing for more interaction in social groups. That maybe people are working too hard and it would be fun to just sort of blow off some steam. But again, with the word flirt, be careful. Don't set up any sort of mixed messages. And if you receive any, make sure you clarify so that person isn't left wondering where you stand. And ultimately, as we look at your uh, outcome card here, the GPS, or as I call it, the destiny card, this is a chance for you to invest in yourself. Believe more in your possibilities, trust your instinct, and know that this path, this change, this energetic portal that I'm seeing here is a very good thing. It's interesting that this card itself actually looks like a portal. The important thing here is your emotions and how you use those emotions to either pull you into that portal or push you away. Remember this month, flexibility is important and being able to ride that energetic wave, that's gonna be the difference between kind of bucking the trend or kind of going with the flow and allowing for all of this 
changing, this movement, and hopefully this reinvention, this rebirth to happen for you, because I'm really excited about the overall energy and the overall opportunities in front of you. So this brings your monthly reading to a close. If you'd ever like to talk a little bit more about some of the issues and some of the opportunities that we talked about here, I would love to do that. The way that you can get in touch with me is by clicking on the first card in the video or right below the video, you can click on the first link. This will take you to my website where you can look at rates and availability. And if it makes sense, then I look forward to seeing your appointment on my schedule. Otherwise, if you would just like to say thank you and somehow give back for all of the energy and the work that I put into this, I would love for you to do that. This is very much a fan and viewer supported channel and it's the contributions that really allow me to make these longer form videos, which I know you guys have been enjoying this year. So a way to make sure that future videos are possible is by clicking on the second card or the second link. And this will take you to my website where you can choose from several different options making a one-time contribution through PayPal, joining me on Patreon, or if you'd prefer to stay right here, you can just click that join button and that will also set up a sustaining contribution. All of these go not only into buying supplies, but more importantly in setting up the calendar time that it takes to do all 12 videos, which is about 12 days. So uh, I'd like to say in advance, thank you for everybody that is thinking about doing it. And if you've already contributed in the past, you made today possible, so I appreciate you. The last way that you can give back is also the easiest. It just involves making a few clicks. So uh, if you haven't already done so, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. This sends a message to me and also to YouTube that this channel matters, so I'd love for you to do that. The next thing that you can do is by clicking the third card or third link below the video. This will allow you to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Plus, you can join my monthly newsletter if you would like. And if you would like to go one step further, you can also share this across your social media platforms, which helps me reach a wider audience. And my goal here is to really empower and to create more light workers on the planet. So when you do that, you help me accomplish those goals and I just wanna say thank you. All right, let's now go to your closing word for the month. As I look at all of the cards, the big thing that I see is change. I mentioned that way back at the beginning when I said this could be a chance to make a new cycle. We saw that echoed when I pulled the Sea Serpent card, which is about flexibility, fluidity, also getting past your own emotions and fears. We see the actual portal happening here with moving from stagnation to change and to really being a participant in that change. One of the important things is that you are the one that can make the change happen, but you have to really start to navigate towards something that you love in your life. If you've been in a place where you haven't felt that love and support or you just don't feel the passion for what you're doing, this is a chance to redirect, to rechannel that, and to make something that really matters in your life and in others. And for some of you, that feeling of frustration that you might have seen when other people were getting further ahead, this month you change the dial and you think, no, I'm no longer frustrated. I'm inspired. I'm going to use that to be a building block to success. I'm going to use that as someone that I look up to and I'm going to see those qualities or nurture those qualities within myself. Realize too, you fought hard to get where you're at. There's a lot to be proud of. And if you can lean on those core skills and those core strengths, namely with the Nine of Wands, perseverance, nothing can stop you. With that, I'd simply like to say thank you. Thanks for being here for the past 50 minutes or so. Thanks for many of you for being with me for the past several years. Um, I love and appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing what kind of change you create in your life. Yes, it can be scary, but it can be fantastic too. Wishing you love, light, and happiness now and always. I'll see you again next month.